Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2015 dramatic thriller movie which is based on real life events in 1996 called Everest. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. As the movie opens, a team is being led by Rob. They are instructed to follow the rope and everything seems to be going well. Six weeks earlier in New Zealand, Rob is celebrating the fact that they managed to get a journalist to join their team, which was originally planning to go with Scott Fisher. He says goodbye to his pregnant wife Jan and assures her that he will be back in time for the birth. Beck Weathers arrives in the airport in Nepal and meets the journalist, including John and Doug, who are on the same climbing team. They go to the hotel where they receive a briefing from Rob and meet the other members of the guide team, Mike Groom and Andy Harold Harris. All the climbers have good levels of climbing experience. The following day, they all get into a helicopter and head for Lukla. Upon arrival, a team of Sherpas join them as they begin the trek higher to Namchi Bazaar. Doug thanks Rob for giving him a discount for the trip. Doug didn't quite make it to the top last time and Beck asks why. Rob interrupts and tells him that he made him come back as it is his job to make sure they get back safely. They reach the Tenbochi Monastery, where they are blessed by the monks before they visit the climbers' memorials. They ultimately reach base camp and are welcomed by Helen Wilton, the base camp manager. They are introduced to their lead Sherpa and Rob meets with Scott Fisher. They share a drink and discuss the terrain ahead. Scott has a new journalist from NBC and Rob explains that John called him and chose to go with his team. He didn't steal him. The team are informed by Carol that they will make three partial acclimatizing ascents before their final ascent. They begin by encountering the icefall, where 19 people have died in the past. By the time they reach Camp 2, Doug seems to be struggling and upon his return is checked over by Carol. Beck is also checked over, but suddenly realizes the date and rushes to send a message to his wife, Peach. She has already sent him a fax, saying happy anniversary, and so he asks to make a call. Back in Texas, Peach takes the call, and Beck apologizes for being late. Afterwards, Peach tells her kids that he never calls. She thinks that he is scared. That night, the team is partying. Scott is outside drinking. He is angry that there is too much competition. The team climbs higher, but Rob instructs them to return due to bad weather conditions. Beck crosses a ladder over the icefall, but there is an avalanche and he slips. Rob goes to help him, but he is angry that he has been kept waiting because of all the teams. Later, Rob meets with the leaders of the other teams and discovers that they are all planning on ascending at the same time, so there will be chaos on the mountain. The South African team, led by Ian, are angry that he is telling them what to do and they storm out. Rob speaks privately with Scott and suggests that they team up. Scott isn't so sure due to their differing styles but ultimately agrees. Their team struggle to agree to the plan going forward but they manage to make it happen. Rob receives a message from Jan that his child will be a girl. The guys discuss their families and how their wives feel about their climbing. Rob calls his wife and tells her their plans. They discuss their unborn child and suggest that she be called Sarah. Jan says no and they laugh together but tells him that she loves him. The team set off for their final ascent. They cross the icefall and reach Camp 1 before heading for Camp 2. Scott returns to help a man that was struggling and says that he will catch them up. They continue to ascend and despite a small accident, they arrive at Camp 3. Meanwhile, Scott has been back to base camp and is now back at Camp 1. Rob advises him to rest for one day, but Scott insists that he'll be okay. Helen radios Rob to tell him that they are monitoring a storm that is heading their way. Rob tells her that he'll keep an eye on it. The next day, the teams head off towards Camp 4. The conditions are bad, but Rob hopes that it will die down after sundown. Scott joins them and after midnight on May 10th, the wind has died down. Rob decides to take this window 
and gives the team 30 minutes to prepare to leave. Beck and Doug are excited that this is it. Scott waits behind to rest, but arranges to meet them later. The teams approach the balcony. Beck begins to struggle with his eyes. He rests while the others go ahead. Rob tries to send him back, but Beck insists on continuing. Rob tells him to wait for 30 minutes, and if he's feeling better, then he can continue. As the team reach the southeast ridge, they discover that there are no fixed ropes and have to attach some themselves. Doug is also struggling, and Rob adjusts his oxygen and encourages them onwards. Some climbers decide to return, as they cannot wait for the ropes to be fixed. Rob radios the situation to Helen, who worries how John's article will look if they are unable to complete the climb. The returning climbers try to convince Beck to return with them, but he refuses. The ropes are attached, and the team starts to make their way to Hillary's step. The first person reaches the summit and cheers. He is followed by the other climbers, who all celebrate the achievement. Rob is waiting for Doug to arrive, but Scott tells him that he is way behind. All of Scott's team made it, and he teases Rob about this. Rob goes to meet Doug and tells him that he has missed the opportunity. Doug begs to continue, and Rob relents and helps him on the final ascent. Further down the mountain, John is descending and finds Beck seemingly delirious. He assures him that the others are right behind him to help. Meanwhile, Doug finally reaches the top. Another team notices a storm approaching and can see that there are climbers still on top. Helen is convinced that it isn't any of their people, but nevertheless, she tries to radio Rob, but there is no answer. Mike, with the rest of the team, encounters Beck and starts to lead him down the mountain. Doug is out of oxygen and Rob begs someone to come back with some gas, but it appears that there is none left. Harold decides to return to collect some gas that has been stashed elsewhere. At base camp, Carol advises Rob to return alone, but he doesn't think that they are at that point yet. Scott also collapses as he is going down the mountain and makes the Sherpa leave him behind. Rob tries to motivate Doug to move, and they start to descend as a huge storm hits base camp. The descending teams also feel the force of the storm. As lightning strikes, Doug lands on a ledge, and when he is joined by Rob, he is told to wait there while Rob fetches oxygen. However, Doug is delirious and tries to follow him and falls off the edge. Mike's team also slips and slides down the mountain before they manage to get hold again. However, some are injured and presumed dead, including Beck. The rest of the team wait in tents at camp until the storm passes. Harold soon meets Rob and provides him with some oxygen. Rob is distraught that Doug has gone. They wait on the mountain together for the storm to pass. At home in New Zealand, Jan calls Helen, who tells her that they haven't returned yet due to the storm. It's getting worse, and there are still 13 people left unaccounted for. Another team offers up their stash of oxygen for anyone to use. Harold starts to burn up and removes his coat, but loses his grip and tumbles off the edge. At base camp, they continue to radio Rob, but there is no answer. The following day, the storm has passed and finally they make contact with Rob. He is frozen but is advised to keep moving. He tells them that Doug and Harold are gone and gives them his position. He is told that some Sherpas are on their way with oxygen but he has to keep moving. They contact Jan again and patch her through to him in order to motivate him. It works and he starts to move. The survivors from Mike's team radio base camp to inform them of the fatalities, which includes Beck. Shortly after, the Sherpa rescue team tell Helen that the weather is bad where they are and they have no choice but to turn back. Helen breaks down in tears. They radio Rob to tell him that they can't bring the oxygen. He says that he is going to stay put one more night. Helen decides to call Jan to inform her of the situation. She wants them to get him down before dark as he won't be able to survive another night. Helen says that she knows, but the storm is worse than before, which is preventing them. Jan asks to talk to Rob again and is patched through. 
They have a tender conversation where he asks about the unborn baby. He says that he is sorry that he doesn't think he'll have the opportunity to meet her and asks that she be named Sarah. She cries and tells him that she loves him. Those listening in base camp all break down in tears as well. Scott's frozen body is discovered. Beck wakes, imagining that his wife is with him. He scrapes the layer of ice off his face and struggling for breath, he climbs to his feet and makes his way to the camp. They radio this news to Helen and she lets Peach know. Peach says that she will arrange for a helicopter to collect them and calls the American Embassy in Nepal for assistance. During this time, Beck and the team reach Camp 2 and his injuries are dealt with. Beck asks about Rob and Doug and he is told the news. The helicopter arrives but is doubtful that it can get up higher than base camp. They have to abandon the rescue and return to base camp to reduce the weight. They try again and land at Camp 2 where Beck is loaded on board. It takes off again and Beck is taken back to safety. The rest of the team make their way back to base camp where everyone is visibly upset by the events. Beck returns home and embraces his wife, thanking her for arranging his rescue. Sometime later, Helen meets Jan back in the airport in New Zealand. Rob's body remains on the mountain with the others who lost their lives, including Scott, Harold, and Doug. Beck lost both hands and his nose to frostbite. Jan gave birth to a baby girl that she named Sarah. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.